Hey, today we'd be playing with fire. Believe it, dude. I've been looking for you for literally like years, man. Last year. We have a pretty thorough love affair with fire. It's uh, been a pretty common theme in a lot of the videos, whether that's the Fire Starters series. I mean, there's an entire playlist dedicated to ways to start a fire. Or whether that's putting fire in a bottle or fire in a tube, or we made a fire tornado. We made flash paper, burns up like ooh, right now, just gone instantly. And we've made alcohol cannons and black powder and flash powder and oh my gosh, you name it. If it involves fire, we are all about that here. And today's no different, but we're actually gonna be studying some things and trying to learn a little bit more about some different fuel sources, some different types of alcohol that we can use for lots of demonstrations and science projects and that sort of thing. So today we're gonna to investigate the difference between burning methanol, ethanol, and isopropyl alcohol. Who doesn't like combustion reactions? I mean, seriously, you get to burn stuff. That's what that's what being a scientist is all about, right? Well, m maybe not all the time, but uh, burning things is always a good time. We're starting with methanol. Methanol is the simplest of all alcohols. It only has one carbon atom and is a very simple molecule. It, there's not a whole lot to it and actually combusts pretty quickly and easily. So we're also gonna test some ethanol, five milliliters of this as well. We'll see how long this burns. Finally, we're gonna test isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol. But the problem with isopropanol, it, uh, it doesn't burn completely just in the, the atmosphere. So I would expect this to take a little bit longer and we should see a little bit more luminous flame, a brighter, more intense light. So we're gonna time it and burn equal amounts of each one of the three alcohols and see which one burns up faster.
sometimes the choice of alcohol doesn't necessarily make a difference, but in a lot of the demonstrations, just changing the alcohol that you're using can make a very big impact. Take for instance the fire bottle demonstration. Now this is a beautiful demonstration, especially if you have a nice clear bottle. And uh, well, I've made a couple of videos about it in the past. I'll, I'll link those up, up here. You can go check those out. But one thing that makes the fire bottle so amazing is the fact that I always use isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is a three carbon alcohol, meaning it has three carbon atoms with some hydrogens and of course an oxygen in there. That's what makes it an alcohol. And having all of those carbons means that it burns a little slower, sometimes doesn't produce quite as complete of a combustion and thereby creating a more luminous flame. And for the fire bottle, the luminous flame is what we're after. We want you to be able to see the flame. A luminous flame simply refers to how much light a flame gives off. So the more complete the combustion reaction, the less light is given off. And the less efficient combustion reactions actually produce a lot more light. There's extra fuel that's not being burned or uh, those are carbon atoms that aren't actually being combined with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. And, and so we just have these leftover carbon atoms from the combustion. Those get heated to such a high temperature that they give off light and that's a more luminous flame. So for lots of reactions or demonstrations, you want that luminous flame. You can always force a luminous flame if you have a combustion reaction that doesn't have enough oxygen or if you just simply have an excess of fuel such as a candle. Candles are a perfect example of a luminous flame. That's the, that's the whole point. We want a candle to give off light. Of course nowadays they pack them with all those smelly fragrances to make them smell good but you know really the original invention of the candle it was for light. Then when I was researching about the different types of fuel sources, I very quickly ran across a lot of folks who were trying to figure out what kind of alcohol to use in your, your camp stove. Like if you have a little alcohol stove, you can find these uh, just about anywhere nowadays, or you can build your own. There's hundreds of videos on YouTube about how to make your own alcohol stove. And uh, once you have that, really it becomes a matter of what type of fuel source do you want to use. So what I've come to determine just based on the tests that I've done and some of the research that I've done in the past, ethanol seems to be the right choice to use for a camp stove. It produces a nice clean combustion and doesn't really have a whole lot of soot associated with it. Plus it's relatively safe. It's not going to be producing any other compounds or other other fumes that are going to be toxic. So I would highly recommend using ethanol for your alcohol stove if that's what you're looking for. Of course ethanol is the right choice mate. I mean why would we not go for the rum? That's a beautiful thing mate. Pardon me one moment. Oh, it's delicious. All right that's 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 what I got. Go click some videos and, you know, watch some other things and find some other cool videos on my channel about fire and tell me down in the comments below what your favorite fire video is that I've done. Maybe it was this one or maybe you like it better when we're just making big fireballs. Go tell me down below what your favorite video, fire video is from this channel and uh, aside from that, I'll catch you guys next time.